Thank you for joining us on this week's message. God has a plan and a purpose for you here at DTC Church, and we're excited to be a part of what God is doing through you and your life. If you want to discover your potential and unlock your purpose, you can visit us at dtcchurch.com, click on connect and find ways to help you on your journey. If you're impacted by today's message, you can give through our website or text DTCC at 77977. God bless. Uh, but again, glad you're here. And if you are tuning in online, uh, thanks for joining us as well. And so, you know, uh, oh, how about them cowboys, right? They're showing us some good things. This is what I believe is happening. The cowboys are working really hard to restore my faith in them again. They just won't let me go. I was literally getting ready to say, you know what, I'm just going to go root for the Browns, you know. But they keep finding a way to bring me back. But... Anyhow, uh, you know, also some of y'all might know that my wife and I celebrated 15 years of marriage this past week. And so I thought that, you know, being that we just celebrated 15 years, I share a couple things with you that, that I think have helped our marriage uh, to, to be successful, for it to be a healthy, and I believe we have a good marriage, and, and we want to continue to have and, and build a great marriage and uh, so I want to share three things with you that, that I believe have helped us to, to have a good relationship. And, and number one, it is uh, we have an all-in commitment. Both of us are all-in. When we got married, we made the decision that we were all-in. In other words, there is no, from day one, divorce has never been an option in our marriage. It has never been a, a potential out for us. We are all-in. Whatever it takes to make it work through the good, the hard, and, the, and, and everything in between, we are all in. We are committed. We are committed. And then uh, secondly uh, is we are both fully surrendered to Christ. In other words, we are surrendered to making our marriage work, our relationship work, the way that Christ has taught us in the Bible. God has taught us in a way how to make marriage work. You know, one of the most popular passages that is read at a wedding is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. Now, it's a beautiful uh, uh, expression of love. It is a beautiful uh, command on how to love one another. But one of the things that I've discovered is, although it is a, a beautiful scripture to share on a wedding day, most couples don't do what is shared in that scripture. Because in that passage, it teaches us how to love each other. And my wife and I have been committed, we have been surrendered to loving each other the way it says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 8. It talks about forgiving one another. Love keeps no record of wrongs. One of the big issues in many relationships is people keep bringing up the past. I'm trying to help somebody. And so our commitment, we're fully surrendered to Christ. Number one, we put God first. That means that she loves God before she loves me, and I love God before I love her. And she's okay with that. She don't get jealous about it. Because she knows that, that if, if I'm going to be able to love her the way that she deserves to be loved, I need to love God first. And so if you're in a relationship today, you're married today, you're, you're newly married, make a commitment to love God first. That will help you to love your spouse. Here's the last one. We prioritize family time. In other words, my, my friends, what I mean by that is we put each other first before our hobbies, before our friends, before other family members, before our jobs. We put each other first. She is my number one, and y'all know I'm her number one. <laughs> Woo! Come on. She's not here to say any otherwise, so, so I can say whatever I want. But anyhow, just a couple quick things just to share with you guys. If you're married, I hope you put those things into practice. And so, um, I sound like a disclaimer after a, a commercial right there. I love those, 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 those commercials which, that, that, um, that tell us what drugs to take, right? You don't have to go into the hood to get drugs no more. You can just, you can order your own drugs online and, and go down to the pharmacy to get one. But... But I, I love the disclaimers. Hey, this is what it's going to do for you. But then it could also cause this, 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 and this, and that. <laughs> Let's have a little faith in God and believe God for our healing and believe God for his touch upon our lives. 
You know, can I tell you one of the things that I pray over my life on a regular basis? I say, I say, Lord, thank you that I'm covered by the blood, that when sickness and disease try to come upon my body, it has to die because I'm covered by the powerful blood of Christ. I encourage you to pray something like that. So today is, is, is what is considered uh, the beginning of Advent season. Advent is a Latin word that means the coming of of our Lord. And so today marks the beginning of Advent season. And so the next four weeks, believers all around the world are, 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 it's a time for us to think about, to reflect on what Christ has accomplished for us through this season of Christmas. Remember, there is no Christmas without Christ. Don't let the world fool you. There is no Christmas without Christ. It's not happy holidays. It's Merry Christmas because there are no holidays if there is no Christ. And so this time of the year is also a time where, where we spend a lot of focus trying to think about, you know, what we want for Christmas. Maybe you tell some of your friends or your loved ones, hey, you know, this is what I, you know, if you want to get me something, this would be cool. Uh, Or you're thinking about what you want to get for somebody else, what kind of special gift you want to get for someone. Uh, But I want to start a series today where the title of our series is All I Want for Christmas. But instead of focusing on what we want for Christmas, I want to show you what God has already given to us because of Christmas. I want to talk to you about some of the gifts that Christ has given us and how they can impact your life and how they can impact the lives of the people around you. And so several hundred years ago, so the first gift I want to talk to you today is I want to talk to you about the amazing gift of peace. Do you know that everyone looks for peace, but few people find it. And I want to help you find peace today. I want to talk to you about the amazing gift of peace. Several hundred years ago, it was foretold that the Messiah was going to come to the earth. And one of the reasons he was coming is he was bringing a gift of peace. Listen to what the scripture says here in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. It says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. Do you know that at the birth of Christ, mark the fulfillment of, of a prophetic word that had been written and spoken of 700 years before Christ ever arrived on the earth. It had been foretold that the Messiah, the Savior of mankind, was going to come and he was going to bring the gift of peace to the world. How many of you could use more peace in your life? And so... Jesus has brought us the Christmas gift of peace. And so I want to share with you three ways the gift of peace makes your life better and how you can pass it around to the people around you. Now, here's the first one. The first way that that the gift of peace can change our life, and it's to be at peace with God. You see, the Bible describes that That all humanity is at war, if you will, with God prior to Christ. You you are an enemy of God and your soul is not at rest because you have no peace with God. Oftentimes, people stay away from church. They stay away from God because they're wrestling with God. There is no peace between them and God. Sometimes people feel guilty or ashamed of their past, and as a result of that, they have no peace with God. But Jesus came to give us the gift of peace, and one of those ways, one of the ways you can have peace is to be at peace with God. Listen to the way Romans chapter 5 verse 1 describes this. It says, since we have been made right... In God's sight, by faith, we have 
peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. In other words, my friends, you don't have to run from God anymore. You don't have to hide from God anymore. You don't have to make a list of all the wrong things that you've done and think that God is holding all those wrongs against you. Instead, you can be at peace with God. Do you know that even as believers that sometimes we, 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 we fall short in certain areas and all of a sudden we, we hide ourselves from God. We, we pull back from God. We pull back from serving, from being involved, from being around other believers because we feel like, no, no, I'm, I'm kind of missing it right now. And you walk away from the peace that God has already given you. But you can be at peace with God. Now, here's the deal. It's not based on what you do. It's based on what Christ already did. The scripture says that it, we are in right standing with God, that we are at peace with God, not by what you did, not by your, what the right things that you do, but by what Jesus did. That's how we're at peace with God. Oh, there is nothing like being at peace with God. Oh, I often run into people who have no peace with God. Oh, but there's a great serenity. There's a great tranquility. There's a great harmony that comes to your soul when you're at peace with God. If you don't have peace with God today, my friends, you came to the right place. You can walk out of here at peace with God. Do you know that the presence of peace in your life represents the blessing of God over you? You can have the peace of God. Now, here's another way you and I can have this peace, and it is to enjoy peace of mind and heart. Come on, how many of y'all want some more peace in your mind and in your heart? How many of you know that, that this is what keeps you up at night? How many of you know that it's your mind and it's the restlessness in your heart, maybe because of some problem that you're having at work? Or maybe this time of the year stresses you out because you think about how am I going to have the money to, to get this for that person and that person. Or maybe you, you, people, get, people, people get overwhelmed by this season. For many people, it's a good time, but for others, it's not so good. Because for many people, this season marks the time to remember that they've lost a loved one, a family member that's no longer with them. It's a time where people sometimes are overwhelmed by stress, maybe by the, at the end of the year projects that they have to do at work. Sometimes it's, it's, it's what this season represents, the fact that maybe they don't have family to spend it with, and it often makes people depressed and lonely, and they have no peace. But here's the good news, my friends, the Prince of Peace has brought peace to the world. Amen. And it is a peace, the Bible says, that is, it's out of this world. But it is available. And you can have it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. You can have peace in your mind and peace in your heart. But Jesus made a very clear distinction that the peace that he brings you, the world can never give you. Listen to the way he describes it in John chapter 14. He says, I am leaving you with a gift. What gift? The peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Listen to what he says. This is the peace that Christ came to give us. But he says there, the world cannot offer this kind of peace. You see, the peace the world offers looks like this. If everything is going well in your work environment, you're at peace. If everything is going well at home with your family or your relationships, you're at peace. If your finances are in a good place and you have more than enough, you're at peace. If you're in good health and you've got no issues, you're at peace. But the minute you get a negative report from the doctors about your health, the minute your relationships begins to go south, or you don't have enough money, or you begin to have problems with a coworker in your office, you lose that peace. 
You see, that's the peace the world offers. But Jesus came to give you a peace that in the midst of trouble, that in the midst of hardship, you can still have that peace. It is a peace, the scripture says, that is not of this world. It did not originate here. It is more powerful than than any peace you can have from this world. And it is a peace that is not dependent upon your own strength. And it is not dependent upon your circumstances or the situations around you. It is a peace, God says, that you can enjoy. You can enjoy a peace of mind and peace in your heart. This is why he says, don't be troubled. Don't be afraid. I have brought you a peace that is not of this world. It's a peace that will be with you. Peace that will never leave you. I don't know about you, but I believe more people would like to have this peace. More people can experience this peace of mind and heart. So often people are filled with anxiety and fear and worry. But God says, I have brought you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Listen to the way he describes it in Philippians chapter 4. He says, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, what situation are you dealing with today? What situation is keeping you up at night? What is it that you're worried about? What is weighing heavy on you that is stealing your peace? He says that's the situation he's talking about. He says by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, is going to do something. It's going to guard your hearts. And it's going to guard your minds. This is the supernatural, powerful peace that Jesus came to give us. Have you ever met somebody who has had this peace? You look at their life and and they're having troubles and they're having problems and they might even have some health issues, but they have this calmness and this peace about them. To the world, a person who carries the peace of God, they look awkward. They seem weird. They seem odd. But it is the peace that God came to give you. I have seen friends of mine who have lost family members, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters to death. But they have this supernatural peace in their heart and in their mind. And everybody else around is looking at them. How are you so calm? Oh, it must be that it hasn't settled in yet. No, what it is is they have the peace of God in their heart and in their mind. This is the peace that God came, God came to give you. So what we celebrate this Christmas. Could you use a little bit more peace, my friends? In this passage, show, put it back on the screen, God gives you a way to have this peace. And it says that don't be anxious. Bring all your circumstances, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it's stealing your peace. He says, bring your situation to God. By prayer, lift it up to him. God, I'm dealing with this. I'm stressed out about how I'm going to have enough money for this month. God, I'm stressed out about some of the family parties I'm going to have to go to. God, I don't have any peace about this or about that. Just bring it to God. Bring your request to God. And he says, and do it with thanksgiving. And thank you, God, that you're the one that can make a way. And thank you, God, that you're the one that provides for me. And thank you, God, for what you've already done in my life. He says, as you do this, he says, he says, then he says, the peace of God that transcends and surpasses all human understanding is going to come. It's going to guard your mind and it's guard your heart. One of the things I've learned about having this peace and walking in it every day of your life, because you can have it every day of your life. But here's the deal. You have to keep your eyes on God. This is what I've learned. The minute that you start looking at your circumstance, you lose that peace. But when you shift your focus back to God, the peace comes back. And so you want to keep your focus upon God, upon the one who is for you. The one who's in control of all things. You know, as a church, we just purchased a brand new uh, location. And one of the things that, that, you know, people have asked me, you know, how do you feel about it, Pastor? I said, I have peace about it. I said, I have peace. I got peace in my mind. I have peace in my heart. But, you know, there are some, some hours during the day when I lose that peace because I begin to take my eyes off of God. And I begin to look at how much money we're going to have to raise in order to get in there. 
and I begin to lose that peace, and then I got to train myself to put my attention back on God because my God is well able to supply all our needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. See, that's how you keep the peace of God in your heart and in your mind. Think about it. Oftentimes, the reason you're worried, the reason you're stressed, the reason you're anxious, the reason you're depressed is because your eyes and your mind are thinking about something that is not God. But when you shift your attention back to the Lord, the peace of God comes back. This is the gift that Christ has given us at Christmas. And so here it is. Be at peace with God. Enjoy peace in your mind and in your heart. And then here's the last one. Share peace with others. You see, the peace that God came to give you wasn't meant just for you. It was meant for you to pass it along and share it with others. Jesus said once, freely you have received, freely give. In other words, every good thing that we receive from God is not just for us. It is also to be shared with others. When God blesses you with more peace, God doesn't want you to hoard that peace. He wants you to share it with others. If you know how to acquire that peace, let others know how to acquire that peace. Maybe you've got some friends, you've got some family members, you've got some co-workers that have been talking to you about how they feel about this season. They're discouraged, they're depressed, they're stressed out, they're worried. Tell them, I know how you can have more peace and show them how to do it. Pass on this message to them so that they too can experience this peace. Every good thing that God blesses us with, my friends, is not meant for us to keep to ourselves. If you have received the gift of eternal life, where you you are, you are now right with God and you have a home in heaven, God doesn't want you to say, well, that's cool, I'm in, and keep it to yourself. No, he wants you to pass that on to somebody else. Yeah. Share it with your family. Share it with your coworkers. Be a part of a church like DTC who is going out to reach the lost, the hurting, the broken, the disconnected, so that they too can have this gift. Do you know that God will raise your, your standard? He will, raise, he will bless you with more money, not to raise your standard of living, but to raise your standard of giving. Amen. See, it's not just about you. It is about others. And peace, God says, is to be shared with others. In the Jewish tradition, it is common to greet one another with shalom aleichem, which means peace unto you. Every time they greet one another, shalom aleichem, peace unto you. And you and I can pass on peace to others. You know, during the holidays, it's often... When you see family members that you're kind of glad you only see once a year. (laughs) Sometimes it's you got to go to parties, you got to go to get togethers, you got to go here, you got to go there. And and sometimes you got to be around people that, that maybe have hurt you in the past, maybe have done you wrong and you don't look forward to seeing them. Or maybe you're going to be around people that are going to tell you things that you don't want to hear. And it often steals your peace, steals your joy. But God, there's a way for you to keep that peace and pass that peace to others. Listen to what it says here in Romans chapter 12. He says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. See, some of your family members might be people that you consider evil. And God says, do not repay evil for evil. But instead, he says, if it is possible, it is in your power to be at peace with everyone. Even the people that have hurt you. Even the people that have wronged you. In other words, instead of getting into that conversation with somebody that you know is going to lead to nowhere, is going to lead to conflict, don't do it. Be at peace with everyone. You know, instead of bringing up the past of one of, with all your family members or your loved ones, it's going to spoil your season. It's going to spoil your family gathering. Don't go into that conversation. Be at peace with everyone. Learn how to, the way you can keep that peace 
is by learning how to pass it on. And this is what I've learned, that if you are at peace with God, and if you have the peace of God in your mind and in your heart, it is much easier to share that peace with others. And so in this Christmas season, my friends, don't let the, the, the you know, the running here and running there and, you know, this month is going to go by fast, as you guys know. You're going to have to go to a lot of things and be in a lot of places, but don't let the speed of this season, don't let the, the rush of it and the, I got to do this and I got to do that. And maybe even the, the search for that right Christmas gift, don't let it get in the way of the peace that Christ has already given you. Come on, how many of y'all received that with me? Let me pray for us. Father, we come before you this afternoon. And Lord, you know every detail about every single one of us. I pray, Lord, that if anyone is here today and they don't they're not at peace with you. They don't have the peace of God in their heart. Lord, let them have it before they leave here today. And I pray, Father, during this Christmas season and always that we would walk in that supernatural, all-surpassing peace that you came to give us. Your name is Prince of Peace because you are the giver of the gift of peace. And so help us, Lord, to be at peace with you, to have your peace in our hearts and in our minds, and to pass that peace to others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Amen. Now, church, before we close, you know we don't like to close our services without giving everyone that opportunity to receive the peace of God to step into a right standing relationship with God. There, there might be some of you here today who you don't have that peace. Maybe you've been running away from God. You've been distant from God. It's not a coincidence that you're here. It's not by chance that you're here. Say, God wants to give you his peace. And I know there are some of you here today who maybe you've prayed a prayer of faith in the past, but, but you've kind of wandered away. You let things distract you. You let things attract you away from this peace that you had with God. Let's get it back today. So right where you're at, just close your eyes and bow your head to me. The scripture says that when we come to faith in Christ, that when we receive what he did for us, that we can have this peace. And so right where you're at, you want to receive God's forgiveness for your sins. You want to be at peace with God. Right where you're at, as a sign of faith, we lift up your hand to the Lord. All across the room, all across the room, just lift up your hand as a sign of faith to God. God bless you. God bless you. God sees you, my friend. God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. God sees you. God bless you. You can put your hands up. Amen. Now let's, let's pray this prayer of faith together. Say this with me. Say, Lord God. I know that through Jesus, I'm forgiven of my sins, and I'm at peace with God. And so, Jesus, today I receive you as my Savior and as my Lord. I commit my life to you. Thank you for the gift of peace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, church, give God a good hand clap.